tell me a tell me a joke, guy. Uh, no. Mm -hmm. You know I don't do jokes. I'm not no, a sense true. of humour. Well, you haven't got a sense of humour. But yeah. Here we go. <coughs> That's made him smile straight away. Look at that. Um Sam. Do you want my second name? Um, Sam Palmer, um, I'm a producer, a maker of music, lots of things in previous lives, currently working in a band called Kirk Bogart. Where did music what? What's my first earliest yeah, musical like memory? Yeah. Is oh this is really cringy, this is. What about the first record? Yeah. That's easier, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. First record I bought was Bright Eyes by Art Garfunkel. Tune. Yeah, oh tune. Wicked. I was a very sensitive soul. Um, and still am. The second record I bought, I don't even remember what the second record I bought was, was Woman by John Lennon. Yeah, what a big wuss, hey, what a big giggles blouse. So those were the first two, I don't remember the third one. Obviously the third one was Anarchy in the UK by the Sex Pistols. Do you, know. do you think you just balance everything up? I think so, yeah. No, I don't know what the third one was, I've got no idea. I just remember the two, those two being really embarrassing. I won a radio show phone in. That was quite cool. I was really young and I asked them for, because um, I won. I actually won, or I couldn't believe it. It was. Did you win? Uh, well, they said we will give you any album you want. So I asked for uh, Blumange, Happy Families. Don't know if you remember Blumange. They were an '80s band. And do you know what I got? They said, "Oh, I don't think we've got that, but we've got um, we've got something else." And so I arrived at BBC Radio Links and got my package, and I got an album by Ruchi Sekimoto. Do you know Ruchi Sekimoto? Yeah. Um, so, and I was about 10 at the time, so I was straight on the avant-garde trip, do you know? Ruchi Sekimoto at 10 years old, beat that. Eh? That's cool, isn't it? And Are you still doing that tapping? <laughs> Sorry, well it's good. I'm nervous, honestly, I'm terrified. No, I did have a pet. She was called Lulu. She was 20 years old. And she died last last year. So this is a really sad story. And it's really bad like that. So you've really pulled that one out of the hat, haven't you? We had her cremated, and I've got her in a, a wooden cat urn. True. It's a true story. Sometimes I talk to her still. Um, she was definitely the gayest cat I've ever met. 
Um, think Grace Jones on Russell Harty. That was my cat. You've met my cat, didn't you, George? You've met your cat. Oh, you did, didn't you? Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. She was lovely, wasn't she? A bit vicious, a bit temperamental, but yeah. Anyway, yeah. I didn't name her, by the way. Obviously, if I'd have named her, she would have been called like Butch or something like that. Um, last item of clothing that you bought. Last item of clothing. Um, ooh. Oh, a hat. It was quite impromptu. Um, it was at Tynemouth Market, and I had to walk back from Tynemouth Market to Monks Eaton. And there was a guy at Tynemouth Market, obviously with hooky gear, but I didn't mind. It looked good. It was North Face, it's a hat. Um, it was good, so I got that. How did Kirk Bogart got start got started? It was a collaboration to start off. Well, first of all, I just started recording Jordan Kirk up. He was actually a student of mine. Not a very good student, but, um, you know, he had a good voice, good guitarist and stuff. So I said, look, I'll, I'll record you. I, I quite like that. And then I sort of started adding bits. It just sort of blossomed from there. And then eventually it sort of got to the point of like, well, I'm not just recording you, am I? This is more like a collaboration. So we need to come up with a name. I didn't want it to be the... Jordan Kirkup All Stars or something like that. Even though I am an All Star, I didn't want it to be the Jordan Kirkup band because Jordan's a rubbish name. So yeah, and then we came, and then we realised that Kirk meant church. Do you know that? Do you know that Kirk is Scottish for church? So we started going under the name Kirk for a while, but then everybody sort of immediately thinks of Star Trek, don't they? So that's a bit crap. <coughs> I wanted some kind of film noir reference. So Kirk Bogart is like a combination of Humphrey Bogart and Dirk Bogard, the two actors, one English, one, one American. Yeah, um, both known for their film noir kind of sort of stuff. So, uh, yeah. And musically, it is, it is still basically me and Jordan sort of bouncing things around. And then obviously Andy, who's the real musician in the band, he's the only one that knows things like keys. Well, Jordan knows a bit. You know a bit, don't you? You know. So yeah, and then Andy sort of like does his thing. What type of genre? Um, I liked the genre of post-folk, but everybody said that was crap. So then I came up with funk folk. Was it funk folk? Folky funk. Yeah, nobody liked that either. Whenever you're putting your music on things like, you know, SoundCloud or Spotify, not that I've tried to put it on Spotify, but certainly, you know, all these other platforms, you've, you've got a list, you know, you've got a drop-down menu, haven't you? So you can't really come up with your own kind of things. Even though, you know, I'm sure everybody's the same. Everybody wants to say, well, you know, my genre is unique, post-funk folk. But then you try to find that on the drop-down menu, and it doesn't come up with it, does it? So what genre are we? We're indie. I'm trying to turn Jordan into a soul singer. By the time we've finished stuff, He's going to sound like Curtis Mayfield. 
Do you know who Curtis Mayfield is, Jordan? You don't, do you? See what I've got to start with? You know, this is what I've got to work with. Soul, funk, I, I don't know, I, that's, that's my genres. Soul, funk, jazz. I try to sort of ram those things in there as much as possible. I'm funky and he's just folk, any old folk. <laughs>